Hey folks, welcome to From the Vault episode number 12. We didn't have a regular episode this week because we had taken a wee break just to focus on some really big episodes that we have coming up. But we didn't want to leave you completely hanging. And I was thinking we should kind of double down on the silliness of last week's cover mount by re-releasing our new metal mixtape, which I think was actually one of our very first mixtapes. I mean... I say that because it's only an hour and 20 minutes long and it's one episode. Usually now when we do a mixtape, it's like easily two or I guess four episodes at this point. So yeah, I thought it'd be good to go back and revisit that and just, you know, get really silly with it and have a laugh really. I know last week was a laugh as well, but this one is probably even funnier. And it's also one of our most popular episodes. So honestly, if you haven't heard it before, I really think you'll dig it. And if you have heard it before, I hope you enjoy it once again. Welcome to our first fucking mixtape. Yeah, I like this. I'm happy. I like this idea, yeah. Waka, waka, waka. So do you want to ex- ex- explain a little bit about what it is? Well, I'll first introduce myself. Oh yeah, hi. Who are you? <laughs> hi, my name is Mark Chino Marino. And I am Chino Marino's doppelganger. <laughs> <laughs> You're half a Chino Marino's I'm doppelganger. I'm half, yeah, probably. And I'm, I'm the fat half. Not only am I half of uh, Chino Marino's doppelganger, but I'm also joined by two men who like blow just as much as he does. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 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 to my right is uh, the bassist from Mushroom Head. It's Chris Cusack. Prove it's not. <laughs> you never exactly. know. Exactly. <laughs> I know. <laughs> to my left is Dave Weaver, who's got his uh, black hoodie hood up in special celebration of... Black the... black hoodie hood. Yeah, you do. You're, oh, yeah. That you've is... got a black hoodie and the hood's up. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. He's new and committed. Yeah, uh-huh. but uh, he's, he's getting himself into that, you know, method acting kind of <laughs> mind space <laughs> to engage with the subject of today's mixtape, which is... New metal. New metal. Volume yeah. one, I suspect. <laughs> Volume one, yeah. So, yeah, explain exactly how this is going to work, please, somebody. Mark? Okay, uh, each of us have chosen a new metal record. Well, <laughs> chosen. <laughs> Some have been forced Hoisted. into it. <laughs> I mean, you, have you, Chris, have, like, tried to get out of this and tried to squeeze your way and gone, oh, I'll choose this one. I remember it being good. And then, I oh, fucking hate it. I'll do another one. Whereas me, I'm like, I've got about 12 I want to put in. <laughs> but basically, we're all going, we're going to uh, bring forward an album each and then uh, at the end, you can vote for which one should go in. Yeah. Uh, which, I was going to say if any, but one has to go in. I, I don't unless know. Unless nobody votes. <laughs> but, like, I don't want no way to vote. But, I you see know. this backfiring dramatically. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we will have a new metal record in the discography by the end of this episode. So let's... Uh, you now, no, there are no. some caveats here. We need to explain new metal and what's not getting included. Right. So a lot of people go, oh, Deftones, White Pony. But no, we're not including Deftones as... As they're metal. really, really good. And we're yeah, exactly. going to probably do an episode on one of their records yeah. at some point. Yeah, I mean, I think White Pony is a fucking classic. And yeah, they were lumped in with new Metal and maybe the first two records, especially the first album, has new Metal bits to it. But as a band, they're way beyond the genre. Way more diverse. Yeah. And mm-hmm. I think we all agree uh, that we don't need to bring them into this. Yeah, and also don't think the label new Metal necessarily does them any favours. Put it yeah. that way. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And those bands like Faith No More and Rage Against the Machine who are... Responsible for new Metal. Sp- yeah. Are not new Metal bands. <laughs> Tool as well, yeah. that was, that's been mentioned yeah. as a band that could... There's all kinds of names getting thrown about. That but I mean, we were talking about... Like, Glassjaw are not new Metal. Glassjaw were that, never uh, new Metal. Nah, they were. Yeah. They're a fucking yeah. hardcore band. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're talking about shit new metal, basically. But, you know, you know, fucking baggy jeans and 
Kappa the stuff that clogged up the arteries of the world dreadlocks. for like, and five years. About, well, yeah. the first Corn album came out in 1994. 94. So like probably almost but, 10 years. I know, 94? but... Yeah. First Corn album was 94, but... First Deftos album was 96. The peak of new metal was around between 98 and 2002, 2003 maybe. Yeah. Um, and like it really hit that. The commercial peak was uh, hot dog... I, Chocolate starfish and the hot dog flavored <laughs> yeah, water. Right. I couldn't yeah. remember the name of it. By Limp Biscuit and <laughs> Hybrid Theory Hybrid by Lincoln Park. Park. And it was when Kill Switch Engage became a big thing that New Metal started to die because guitarists decided they actually wanted to learn how to play guitar. Yeah, and, I wanted to split my fingers songs. up from rather than just doing this yeah, and drop D. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that's one of the caveats. I guess the other caveat is um, we won't be talking about. Every new metal record because there's quite a lot of them. And and, and but we might literally drop in and out. we have the one person in the room that could talk about every new metal record. <laughs> and David, yep. I mean, yeah, some. I mean, there's so many bad records in there. <laughs> so thing. many bad records. But what's, it's un- perverse. what's yeah. unbelievable about it is going back and looking at like the videos f- of bands of like like Spine Shank and. Dry kill logic <laughs> and like uh, and He's all done of, already. Yeah, <laughs> and like even like. And seeing the budgets that were thrown at them yeah, for man, you know videos so and for singles money. and production, it's absolutely but fucking all mental. Major labels as well, they were like yeah. Roadrunner, Sony, Epic. They were they all just, fucking they huge. They all labels, got man. signed up. Yeah. Money checked at them. People went to see them for a couple of years, and then the three riffs that they had got you know pretty boring eventually. The three Pantera riffs that they had, kind of <laughs> yeah, that they sort of turned the mid up on. Yeah. Um, Do you remember when Cold Chamber tried to make a Scary Milkman a thing? Oh. F- f- like, Cold man. Chamber were like one of those original new metal bands that were like went around with Corn and Limp Biscuit and everything, but like they, you, time has not been kind to them. Yeah, they like, basically sound you like Corn. Like five can, minutes wasn't kind. You can <laughs> you can go back and you can you can even listen to like Limp Biscuit and see you know the high points of what they did and you know and there's a lot of hidden good stuff in a lot of this new metal, but. Cold Chamber were just a bad band. Yeah. They were really shit. Like really <laughs> shit. <laughs> like <laughs> terrible. Me loco. Me loco. Yeah, just really, really bad. Um, yeah, and anyway. they're a band that would never have happened if there wasn't a delirium around at the time like they would they would have been treated with the disdain they, they deserved but like yeah. Dave says there was so much money being split I mean that was the last gasp of the industry in terms of spending power yeah, at totally, that point yeah. as well you oh, still had yeah, you still had sales you know you still had like like I think like Hybrid Theory sold millions 40 so, million I think it, so it's, it's like, like one of the highest selling albums of all time yeah and it was the biggest selling album of that year you know including people like Britney Spears and all that kind of stuff it was the biggest selling album of that year so it's like it's pretty amazing that there was such a quick drop off in record sales, but there was still revenue kicking about then. Mm. Too much revenue from the sounds yeah. of it. But yeah, these uh, th- so many bands that should never have ever been allowed into the club. There is an upside though. There are there are some actually genuinely interesting bands that made their way onto and made their way onto major labels who were not new metal bands. Deftones yeah. might never have made it. Yeah, and also let's not forget like the Opeth. They're not a, metal, a new metal band by any stretch of imagination. But they got they signed, signed up. to a major label, yeah, because of this. And so another really famous black metal band too. I can't remember the name of. They also got signed to a major label. Oh, we, uh, probably Demu Borger, maybe. No, it was uh, was it Satric, Satrico? Oh, Satrico. Satrico. Yeah, 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 yeah. They got signed to a major label. I'm pretty sure they did as well. Yeah. Off the back of this, and then I mean, certainly it gave too, just metal you know? as a genre yeah. a, like a commercial viability. Gave it you a know f- fucking clownishness as well, though. Totally. I, I think that's where the backlash came from. It was like. The fucking clownishness of it. One of the bands that we never established whether or not they were eligible are probably a great <laughs> case study for this is Insane Clown Posse. You honk your horn and say fuck you. Now what the fuck does that do? You feel better now? I didn't let you pass. How about I stop my car and beat your fucking ass? So many times will my neighbour be his wife. <laughs> oh yeah, we never <laughs> talk about that. <laughs> we <laughs> never <laughs> talk about Insane Clown Posse. <laughs> the Juggalos, that whole gormless American sort of Midwest white working class thing, like, and that carried over over here. The wife beater shirts, the the white trash thing, even the fact that Eminem was really big in the metal clubs and stuff. There was a real like 
fetishization mm. of white trash during Kid the- Rock. Kid he Rock. was like Kid Rock. defining Absolutely. of that. Like, that first Kid Rock did record. WWE. Yep. Yeah, and you look back in that, and it's but like, it was working I mean, class a, American music, a lot of it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, um, it, it was, but also a lot of it. But it was, it was also pandering to the lowest common denominator and some oh, really yeah. low instincts in people. You know, it was like there was some really shitty misogyny kicking about in that scene. Oh, yeah, you know, um, and, and the head video planet. for Nuki. You know yeah, mean? video for Nuki, just Limp Bizkit yeah, overall. Generally, yeah. Uh, head Planet Earth as well. Like. I remember I had a pal gave me like a couple of Head Planet Earth albums in uni. So this in was uni? in like 2005. <laughs> and I was like, fuck, they're still going. And I listened to them. I was like, this is really bad. But it was like well produced and they had like some decent riffs, but it was just like, oh, I want you to be my fucking stripper, motherfucker. Blah, blah. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, they are still teenage boys they, and they, they have not last learned. Year. And uh, hey, yeah, they still based on our Facebook page. Yeah. We're quite good, <laughs> according to some commentators. Could drop some unsung trivia here. Um, <laughs> the first time we ever recorded a podcast was the same night as the same kind of we were playing in Glasgow. Oh, yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. And wow, the clientele was awesome. It was yeah. Scotland trying to be like South Carolina. It was but really insane. Climate policy have they not like recently sort of distanced themselves from the alt right because they got lumped in somehow and oh man I, and I, then they were like no we're not part of that so like I really want to get into that because Christian. they've accidentally become like slightly uh, you know lefty it's, figureheads it, it's but not they're just obviously then. not that, this is a weird thing right so another another kind of cultural phenomenon of the new metal thing there was like a, a fake wokeness to it right mm-hmm. so there was like a some of the better bands. On the on the the, the, <laughs> the spectrum, um, bands like System of a Down uh, had a political aspect to their music. They were one of the few ones that did. Others threw in these token references to you know George Bush or you know just cliched glib kind of political observations. But in amongst all that, I mean, bear in mind, new metal was at its height when September 11th happened, and there was a really strange political fallout within the scene I was going to mention that but I think I think that might have actually been the point I think for some reason I don't know how I'm going to put evidence behind this I'm just speaking out loud but it's interesting how 9-11 happened and then the fall of New Metal like was coincided almost identically with it it also coincided with the commercial peak as well in a way because Toxicity and Iowa were both in the charts on September the 11th. Toxicity came out one week exactly before 9-11. Yeah, exactly. And I think maybe Iowa was the week after. I think those two albums were like within a fortnight. It was that that week before actually. Oh yeah, Yeah. okay. But like in terms of those albums, I think what they maybe did pushed that very limited genre to the fucking limits. And so System of a Down, if they, they then went another way and Slipknot just could have been just a metal band. Yeah, they outgrew it. Yeah, they'd outgrown the limits of the new metal genre. And at the same time, America and the world had kind of lost this innocence of the 90s that, um, did, you know, in a very cultural way, and that there isn't this fucking innocence yeah, uh, to world. You know, and that's, what, yeah. and that's what new metal was. It was like party music. It was, you know, yeah, bro it was music. It was like, Stupid, who yeah, gives yeah. a fuck? Yeah, it was like the ultimate culmination of the 90s and the Cold War being over and nothing mattering. Yeah, it was kind of like... post-grunge, kind of mm. like the, the austerity and the sort of uh, seriousness and the kind of genuine sort of cultural revolutionary aspects of grunge, like the, the LGBT movements and women's rights and things like that. Yeah. They, they were people, especially American working class people, were fucking sick of being told that they were out of order for a lot of their behaviour and it was a chance to sort of... Yeah, switch off a little bit and not feel bad about themselves for a lot of these things which was fair enough you know and a lot of these kids that were like getting chastised for being yeah because un- Pearl Jam un- had become really boring by then <laughs> so if you were into yeah, heavy I mean, music <laughs> they started pretty boring to be fair but I think think the thing is though right so like Dave says from that naivety and from that loss of innocence around well, I loss of innocence it was horrible shit happening all the time but the cultural impact of the September 11th thing it took that wokeness inverted commas in a slightly dark direction that we're really kind of seeing that playing out now as well, culturally. System of a Down are a good example, okay, because there you have a band that were singing about political things. You know, he's an Armenian heritage. He was singing about the Armenian genocide, which a lot of people still refuse to acknowledge. Where, mm-hmm. You know, the, the Turkish massacre, a million yep. people, way more, way mm-hmm. more than a million people. Yeah. 
And it's um, that was interesting. That was inform- informative. But those same people started to fall prey to like the real culture of like uh, 9-11 conspiracy theories. It started to become this counter-political sort of tantrum where darker elements started to move within it. The anti-Semitism of the Illuminati and all these kind of weird things. That, like Insane Clown Posse were picking up a lot of fans who were who were sympathetic to that. And the like, system of a down. Even the guys in the band, I think, at times overstepped the mark with some of their comments and they were just engaging with ideas that maybe seemed to them like, you know, healthy scepticism. Well, on toxicity, there you are know, some, yeah, the, we'll talk Charles about Manson. That. Yeah. yeah, there's a few things yeah. on that which have <laughs> troublesome views. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> and so they, they were starting, you were seeing the very early stages of what we're seeing now in terms of the alt-right, because the alt-right is not neo-Nazis. The alt-right are people between us, let's say, and, and neo-Nazis who think, oh man, I don't, I don't, believe in you know this but at the same time i don't i don't think that i shouldn't get a job because a black man should get it or you know there's these much more moderate opinions and unfortunately there was a little bit of a gateway drug came out of some of the new metal stuff mm. including through bands like head planet earth who thought they were really woke who thought they were really like you know counterculture and revolutionary in their rhetoric but really they were starting to engage with ideas that far from being far left were actually far right and now you've got this weird bracket in where the far left and the far right agree in an, an alarming amount especially anti-Semitism, especially Illuminati and lizards and all this stupid shit. So it makes sense that people like the Insane Clown Posse did have to, even just from a business standpoint, distance themselves from those elements because there's plenty of them in that scene, Mm -hmm. unfortunately. And it is a weird thing because a lot of people flirt with new metal in a... God, I'm making it sound like fucking gun crime or something like that. <laughs> a lot of people flirt with it in a very sort of like ironic way and like the post that we put up on our social media got a massive reaction and I get that it's fun and it's funny and it's fucking hilarious but it's also it's, nostalgic yeah that. it's nostalgic mm. and it, it reminds a lot of people of being young but it was also pretty fucking stupid and it also engaged to a lot of a lot of like our lesser instincts yeah. and didn't do a lot of a lot of aspects. There were some upsides, but I think there were a lot more downsides. But it's, for I, it's so there's so many parallels with new metal and glam metal. Like, oh yeah, yeah for you sure. know, uh-huh. yeah. money was thrown at it by record labels. It was pop music, but from a done by metal bands. Um, you know, Limp Biscuit and you know are basically Motley Crue, but with you know, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. Yeah. Um, so it's like it's well yeah exactly <laughs> we fucking remember it like Hot Topic is a huge thing in America because of new metal that exists you know it's a counterculture cash grab I mean mm-hmm. we had fucking what we had Flip we had Hellfire yeah yeah just people that were cashing in yeah. on like stupid teens which is basically what we were like, yeah. let's not fucking be around the bush here right yeah but it was nice we to we were tie- fucking part of this and oh, so we were but it was fucking great to, to be it, part like, of that yeah because it was, culture. there was like mm-hmm. we were still outsiders I was still an outsider in my school because I had my fucking my corn t-shirt or whatever. But it it sort of united and then commercialised the outsiders mm-hmm. globally. It is, it is actually strange in hindsight how such noisy music did transition into a mainstream. Like that That is pretty crazy when you consider that Link, yeah, Linkin like, Park was the number one album. And it, Roland was a number one single. Yeah, I mean, that's... That like is, Limp Bizkit were on fucking top of the pops that, that, several that times. That is pretty wild. I mean, and in, in its own way... We spoke about this with Jonah Matranga, like, in its own way. It's kind of interesting that for a while there was a form of music in the charts that old people fucking hated again. It was mm-hmm. like as stupid as it was. Yeah, they were like, "This is just noise," and they were. It was at actually Slipknot in the top forty. Like, yeah, exactly. And you're like, "How can you listen to this?" And Slipknot were disturbing yeah. the older folk, and it's like, yeah, it was, it was pretty interesting. Wait, Wait and Bleed was in the charts. It's like, yeah, and it's. It's yeah, a, it's a pop I, as a pop song. Like it starts with the chorus. For fuck's so, sake. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm not trying to say there weren't interesting upsides and cultural kind of benefits from it, but I do think musically there were a lot of fucking dead ends, like a lot of really bad dead ends, yeah. and yeah. just totally but fucking I think dragging the bottom. What we'll maybe talk about now is the bands that then avoided these dead ends. Yeah, more or less. So do you want to? Will we go round the room and you can declare your vested interest? Before we do that, a couple of other things I want to mention that you brought up. Like, post grunge is very much tied in with us as well. Yeah, so stuff like we should talk fucking about that. Creed yeah. and blah, blah, blah. Puddle of Mud. Puddle of Mud and... Yeah, like Stain. Puddle of Mud and Stain are like yeah. crossover bands even. And then threw into Nickelback as well. Yeah. <laughs> that was not a good groan. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I mean, people actually go and see Nickelback. Like, like Nickelback. 
And like to some me, people actually sleep thousands. with the members of Nickelback. It's like a Jesus. Oh, it's like Are a cliche. There? It's like a cliche. I hate Nickelback, and like maybe at some point it'll become ironic to like them again. But I'm I'm putting my cards on the table. I fucking hated them <laughs> oh, like straight like at the beginning, never like liked them before like they got massive. And my then, sister bought the Silver Side up. And she doesn't like rock music. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was rock it was music for people that didn't music. like yeah. rock music. Remember that so thing many about, people bought that record. Remember that thing about the Manix when they started bringing out their kind of big, like like Australia and stuff like that? And it yeah, was like yeah, rock yeah. music for people who drove BMWs <laughs> and wore blue shirts and went to conferences. I will come to your house and smother you in your sleep. I had to... Uh, <laughs> there was this... I remember there was a talent contest in my high school... And I was like the guitar player in school because it was quite a wee school. school. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, well, I was the most talented musician. Well, no, I wasn't at all, but I was the one that played rock guitar. For this talent contest, first of all, I played guitar for a little guy called Peter who did, um, oh, I can't remember, an Elvis Presley song. So I played guitar for him to do it live and he Where dressed he as Elvis. I have no idea. He was <laughs> slightly odd, but very nice boy. And then there was another little guy called Ross uh, who had great old man hair even though he was like 12 <laughs> and he was like a little Did chubby he reminded me of uh, he looked exactly like Wendell Barton from The Simpsons oh, right, okay. and he did a f- superb cover of How You Remind Me by Nickelback <laughs> and I had to f- my, the music teacher made me fucking play guitar to that song and like I remember sitting in the fucking hall practicing that I was just like I just wanted to fucking bite my own eyes out. It was, oh, I fucking hate that song. But that, 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 that post-grunge thing, I mean, Creed as well, that was astonishing. Yeah. And did you know it's they're still so huge as well. They're massive. You know what I think? Like, we touched on this as well, and this is maybe just, uh, sorry, it's another tangent, but it's interesting, given the working class connection with America, how many of these bands turned out to have like a covert Christian agenda? Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. yeah. Creed... Or POD. Well, Creed are not covert. Creed, 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 Creed yeah, yeah. are very overt, uh, and, and as I said, that band yeah. Taproot as well. Uh-huh. And it was like a, a, a number of these bands, I think they realised, because there's such a big market for Christian rock in America what, as well. Evanescence came, they started off as a Christian rock yeah. band. Yeah. And that's, Do you know what's really interesting about that as well? There's a lot a lot of uh, metalcore bands also were the same. Yes. As I Lay Dying. Two yeah, yeah. metal records. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's an entire record that made up Christian metal, uh, Christian metalcore bands. And it's it's insidious, but like <laughs> like as I lay dying, if they were ten years younger, would have been a new metal band. Yeah, they just sure. uh-huh. they they copied Kill Switch like Engage yeah. instead of copying Corn. But one thing I need to say before we actually move on to the records, all that I want to say is that we wouldn't be here liking any of the high level music that we like if it was not for new metal existing and being so popular. Or maybe Chris because. Chris is older. Yeah, well, and, I mean, but yeah. like, I would not have got. I would oh, not maybe, have got, maybe I would that, not have that this explains like, why I don't have these records in my collection. You no, guys like, but I, yeah, I'm exactly of the generation. Like, I bought my first Kerrang because it had Corn on the cover mount CD, and I bought my first Metal Hammer because it had a Slipknot interview in it. I just want to illustrate as well, by the way, that my my first Corn uh, experience was Corn on the cover mount cassette. Oh, fucking hell <laughs> yeah exactly this is the generation <laughs> gap that we have but yeah like that led me down reading Krang and getting into heavy music and stuff like that because I remember I saw Got the Life video on the chart show on CBBC or on, no, <laughs> C- on ITV on a Sunday and I, I was like what the hell is that and it was on you know f- yeah. four o'clock on a Sunday afternoon and this is the beginning of you know new metal coming to the mainstream and I saw that and I was like Okay, I I I like this music because it's weird and loud and different to Oasis. You love a slap bass, and I mean that click, <laughs> that click, that man, click, that click. So, what are the albums we're going to talk about? Well, we've all picked an album each, I guess. <laughs> yeah, and I'm going to fight the corner for System of a Down's Toxicity. Yeah, I think it was a rig that you got that anyway. I said it first. I literally <laughs> no, said no, it first. Chris. Guys, guys, I've got an idea. Let's pick an album. It's just my doing toxicity. <laughs> he did say it first and you went, oh, okay, cool. Uh, Chris, what's, that, what's yours? Oh, uh, right. I mean, how many how many choices did you guys veto that I tried to pick for this? Well, and I would have picked System of a Down's first album, to be fair, given the, the scarcity of good options here. It's a genre of short straws. It really is a genre of short straws, man. But I've gone for Slipknot's debut album because I had fond memories of it. We'll get to that. (laughs) 
nostalgia okay, is nostalgia is fucking dangerous, man. <laughs> uh, and I'm going to go for Corn because Corn are like the definitive new metal band. I think they didn't maybe sell as many records as Slipknot. Blah blah blah. Uh, or Limp Bizkit. Or Limp Bizkit, and they weren't as heavy as some, but they're heavier. Like Limp I think they're the most influential throughout, and they define that sound because they never fucking diverged from it. They, they've just been Corn, and they are just new metal. What like, album are you doing by Corn? Yeah, what album? Yeah. People are going to disagree with me on this, but I'm going to go for issues. Including me, because I think you should have done Life is Peachy. I really do like Life is Peachy. I said you should have went with Follow the Leader. I think Follow the Leader has their best tracks on it, but it's also really patchy. It's very patchy. Yeah. Uh, I like Corn. Corn's the one that set the whole fucking genre off, so it's like the fucking starting point. Slug Pickens, really. But don't good know record. Why do you say to um, this? Untouchables uh, is the most expensive record if we're talking about that. They spent something like three million quid on that album. Shit, and it's fucking awful. And the covers yeah. horrendous. I remember when it. I know it just looks they, like poo. Corn have it's some of the just worst, worst. The worst covers. I mean, Life Is Peachy is a good mm. cover, but they have some of the worst covers. I know, and that's the one that they didn't use their logo on. Uh, How do you spend three million dollars on an album? How? That's I, know. Roses. I know. That's, that, that took years, though. That's just <laughs> spunking cash away. Like, they, it took them two years to record an album that cost three million dollars. How the fuck do you do that? I have no idea. What, what are you recording with? I know. More to the point, how do you, you do that and still have it sound like that? Yeah. Well, you know. I mean, it was very clear shit. <laughs> it was like having glass sewers. <laughs> you know, you could just see everything perfectly as it <laughs> flew down. down for. Yeah, uh, but because I not- chose that, and I didn't choose any of the other corn albums. We are not choosing Linkin Park's Hybrid Theory, which is the best selling. Which I thought they had metal. chosen. But I mean, that's a <laughs> much to your anger. I remember it's because I had to it's take a time good, to learn about them. It's a good against my will. <laughs> it's a good pop r- record. It's a fantastic pop record. Yeah, to be fair, I did say that we were doing this to a few people and they all said, well, you're doing hybrid theory. And I was like, no. Nah. Yeah. So I feel kind of contrary for not doing it, but I also feel like Korn are the defining band. I would like to interject at this point and say that since I'm not going to get the opportunity to use it later, <laughs> Lincoln Park's name was only spelt that way because they wanted a domain name <laughs> and Lincoln Park was gone. Yeah, that's fine. That is cool. everything you need to know about They that were ahead band. of the game. That was 2001. <laughs> yeah. Less I hear, the less you say. You'll find that. There was, there was a lot of shit around about the time saying that they might be manufactured. It was only like a Kerrang, actually. Yeah, yeah. yeah. well, that's only because they advertised the for a singer. Of the record label set them up with Chester Bennett and mm-hmm. on vocals they got rid of a guy before him, right. uh, the, the other three, and then they automatically got a deal when that guy was promoted to head of their subsequent label. They also survived. They survived New Metal and they still were like, selling out stadiums and stuff like that in America. I like to think of them as the American Lost Prophets. <laughs> you shouldn't do that. We <laughs> <laughs> didn't mention Lost Prophets, and there's actually one of the things that I, we should speak about. There's a, there's a very... Well, an elephant in the room. Apart but. from that, that side of things, but there's a, a, a an absolute, like, lack... Whenever anybody speaks about this genre of music, there's a huge lack of any British new metal bands. Although th- there are definitely some. Yeah, after uh, nine. So Earth Tone 9, great. Although, I mean, they Not sounded more like Tool yeah. mm. by their third record. I see that. But then there was like uh, Number One Sun, I think. Uh, one Minute Silence for Irish. One Minute, oh yeah, that's right. No, and I think the singer was from Gibraltar, maybe. Mm. Skin uh, Dread. Good trivial. Uh, Skin Dread. Oh, fuck, who else? Uh Breed 77 Holy shit man Yeah uh, I mean let's Let's not fuck around here though I, And I can tell you From having been in a band From 2000 to 2008 Yeah They were a shitload Of British metal bands Yeah exactly new, Yeah there was a lot bands. Not Pony. that many they Never broke through yeah. man Phony Phony yeah. yeah There were a lot of them man the, the, the scene at the time Was utterly swamped with them mm. Especially in the more Provincial towns Like see See outside of like Glasgow and Edinburgh Yeah well, In fact not Edinburgh Was bad for it Edinburgh was a huge New metal scene but in some of the smaller towns, and I'm sure it's the same across Britain, and I'm sure it's probably the same across Europe, the smaller towns you would go to like community centres and there were like kids playing basses that were almost vertical yeah. and spiky guitars and had dreadlocks and baggy trousers. And Little the scene was, patches. it was just clogged yeah. with all of that stuff. Like Psychedelic, which had a BBC documentary. Oh, I don't, I that was a thing, I've seen that. 
Kill to this. Kill to this. I think we're the defining British new metal band because yeah, they were on every single bill that ever toured the UK. They supported every new metal band. Um, they had the two, which was Roman numerals. Roman numerals in the middle, and they were fucking awful, like so bad, <laughs> like really, really terrible. They had no, no uh, positive things no, about them at features. all. Yeah, yeah. So let's get into these records. Oh no, no, wait a minute, wait a minute. Oh, wait, one last bit of trivia. Okay, I love it. It's one of my favorite bits in new metal trivia. So after the new metal thing, there was a band called the Icarus Line. From, yes. from the States yeah. and they had a record label called Buddy Head and really Buddy, good record really yeah, good band Icarus Line had a, an album called Mono which I think we'll hopefully cover mm. at one point because I love it but um, very kind of noise punk kind of Iggy Pop type thing like bits of Fugazi and stuff anyway regardless Icarus Line were getting courted by Fred Durst because Fred Durst obviously one of those guys that wanted to remain cool by kind of following the zeitgeist right so he summoned them in to a meeting at his offices to try and uh, to try and sign them and they turned up early. Well, I think they actually turned up on time, but Fred Durst being Fred Durst, they wanted to kind of do that thing of keeping them waiting and swan into the room. And so they, they were just there for f- fucking shits and giggles because Buddyhead was notorious for doing loads of like really gorilla pranky sort of stuff. Mm. And when they were in his office, they noticed that he had a glass cabinet which had his red caps from special <laughs> events. <laughs> yeah. And he had, he had them next to like a photo. So they had the red cap where he was at the, was it the MTV Awards with Britney Spears or whatever he took, went on a date with her. Cause I think he was yeah, dating yeah. for a while, right? Yeah. And uh, anyway, so... Uh, Icarus Line broke into that cabinet and stole at least one, I think maybe a couple of the caps, and then made off with it and were gone before Durst even came into the meeting. And then later that day, started getting like threats on their, on their answer <laughs> machine about what he was going to do to them. And they sold the caps and gave all the money to charity and an auction. Yeah. But Durst started like when they went public with it, Durst started leaving them like hate messages. And then they published all the messages on their website, buddyhead.com at the time. <laughs> So there you go. So I just wanted to shoehorn that in. Can I? Uh, <laughs> I just remembered this. this. So my old band that's been mentioned a million times in guys. high school, we were in Kerrang in Scum Scene, you know, oh, yeah, that yeah, little yeah. unsigned bit. Yeah. And uh, like there was something, I can't remember what we said, but we were like kind of weird. We're cookie guys. We have a teddy bear called Casey Chaos. Wow. Because for some reason we another, did. Another and act then, that wasn't eligible for New Metal. Because yeah, we're not a New Metal, man. Yeah. And we hate Fred Durst because we... Fred Durst was like a figurehead of hatred amongst legitimate music fans. Legitimate new metal fans. Yeah, exactly. Um, and he tainted America's princess, Britney Spears, as well. Like, I mean, that's how big it was, as well. He's going out with Britney Spears. That's fucking um, nuts. But uh, anyway, we started getting fucking post, like, fan mail. Actual post? Uh, yeah, Real letters. to my parents' house. Because I was only fucking 15 at the time. And uh, for some reason, the address was in Kerrang. And they sent sent us letters and one of them included s- some girl from Doncaster had created a, a fucking A4 sheet of paper with a photo of Fred Durst in the middle and it was like a dartboard and it was a Fred Durst spittoon and it had scores and everything and so you could spit Fred Durst's face and then like it was a whole game and uh, that's how much Fred Durst was hated that's, and that's pretty insane Man, yeah, she was so, really on message with you guys. Yeah. I thought you were going to say she sent you like a threat. No, no, <laughs> she like sent us a whole game to spit on Fred Durst's face. Created that, crafted it. My new metal story uh, uh, involves a band who formed when I was in high school. Uh huh. And are still a band to this day. They're still playing new metal. <laughs> it still exists. Could be so many. Still play gigs. <laughs> <laughs> and that's just so fucking strange, man. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is mad. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't know what to do if I saw a new metal band right now <laughs> like if I went to Block and there was a new metal band playing I'd be like it's very odd yeah, <laughs> it's very strange you've asked uh, me a bunch of times to get a new metal band for your DJ night yeah that's true five finger death punch <laughs> mate they sold when, up the hydro or something happened we, we should also give an like an honourable mention to all the new metal bands that like to use numbers mm-hmm. and all the new metal bands that like to fuck about with the spelling of their name especially oh, the yeah. word sick yep. and ill and things like that mm-hmm. that's mm-hmm. how you do yeah. it that's how you stand out. All right, so System of a Down Toxicity. Am, am I starting this? Yeah, 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 you're starting it, man. Okay, cool. <laughs> Uh, well, I suppose the, the the elephant in the room is why didn't I pick the first record? I think this the elephant in my room. Yeah, I think this record's got better songs on it. I think this is when they actually became better songwriters. They were thinking more about the music, thinking about how they can construct, I guess, poppy songs. I mean, let's let's make no bones about it. There are songs on this record which are custom made to be played in rock radio. 
you're built exactly for that. This is the sex as my down record that I heard, but this is the first one that I actually wanted to listen to more. I actually got a bootleg copy of this in school for like three quid. Like <laughs> on CD, CDR. On CDR, yeah. Yes. You ruined thing. the music industry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, and I fucking played the shit out of it. I know the stung of the worst I was playing the flat the you other day. You noticed the album after that you were meant to steal. <laughs> exactly, <laughs> ah, yes. <yeah. hey. laughs> ding, ding. Played it in the house recently. Um, I was just full of fucking... So I still knew every word, every fucking lick, all of it, man. I think this is the best songs they, that they'd written at that point. Later records have... I disagree respectfully. See, I think this see is for me, songwriting, man. For uh, sure. I don't know. I, like, the production is obviously a lot clearer. Rick and, Rubin. Yeah, exactly. It's so fat. Like, they just, so many layers of guitars. Mm. Prison Song is fucking great. And, mm. like, Dear Dance. Yep. And it's got some really Aerials. great tracks on it. And then that sort of 80, 80 bits that they do, like, at the end of Science. Mm -hmm. I Like, I actually, I really enjoyed that. But this was a record. I remember I got the two albums on the same birthday and Toxicity was the one that became like a party album for like me and all my pals and like it would go on uh, at my friend Claire's house and it would just you know that would be one of the records that we all just loved as a like a communal record but then System of a Down was the one that I listened to on my own and I loved as an album in mm -hmm. itself uh, it wasn't like a sing-along one but like it's I don't know I just loved the more the, the energy of it like the weird ideas on it I love like Sweet Pea and I love the devil and yeah yeah see, see like, I think like with System of a Down like the, the album the, the debut album I feel like it, it was a much more bold step because New Metal at the time was quite apolitical it was quite stodgy it was quite grim and that was like totally whimsical at points some of some of the kind of you know mm -hmm. vocal things that he does yeah. and stuff, it was like, ridiculous but like it, it, it worked <laughs> It was car kind of cartoony. Yeah, cartoony. Mm. It was it was punkier. You know, it was it was a bit edgier. There was something quite raw about it. And they're also a band that seemed to get a little bit of le like respect and legitimacy from people that were otherwise a bit cynical about new metal in general. Even when you saw them touring with like Dillinger Escape Plan and stuff like that, mm -hmm. there was a sense that they were a little bit more of an authentic band. The second album, they'd proven that that worked. So the second album wasn't as big a daring step. I think what they did with the second album, and I'll totally give you this. It's the singles album. So obviously you had Toxicity, you had Chop Suey and you had Aerials and they were all big singles, big sing-along singles. I cry when angels deserve to die in my self-righteous And they didn't have that in the first album, apart from maybe spider, uh, Spiders? Sugar. And Sugar. Sugar, yeah. Yeah, Spiders and Sugar, I thought, were like... And Spiders kind of did the same thing as Ariel, so mm -hmm. it was the kind of moody one. But, like, uh, that and Sugar were the, the sing-along tunes on that one. But they improved the sing-along factor and the production value and the kind of... I suspect there was a bit of record label involvement in that. It's like, guys, you could be huge if we would just write some more singles. So I kind of feel like the first album's a wee bit more naive and a wee bit more sincere. Or, or, like, I get your point uh, regarding it, it's not as iconic... But I do think the actual album tracks in it are stronger. I don't think the album tracks on the second album are as strong. I think, I think some of them are pretty cringeworthy. But some I think of them there are. Some... I mean, there's some songs that shouldn't be on this. I think it's, I think it's over long, minutes, isn't it? It's too long for 44 yeah, I think minutes, it should be a, insane. a 10 or 11 track yeah. album. Um, like X can go. Yeah. Um, Jet can Pilot. Go, Bounce can go as well. Yeah, Bounce is yeah. shit. Um, um, what's the deal with science, by the way? Is that not a creationist thing? It's a creationist song, yeah. It's, it's Science has failed our world, so it's like basically back in creationism, yeah. It's, no, is it? I, I always thought it was more about like misuse of science. No, it's, like, it's a song about creationism. Science has to recognize the single most potent element of human existence. Mm -hmm. It's like uh, it's about like creation versus evolution. See, and that's that's kind of that thing I'm saying where there was like kind of weird wokeness mm -hmm. to the metal scene, uh, the new metal scene that I think, yeah, it, it leaves a wee bit of a mm -hmm. weird taste in the mouth. I, I, I'd actually quite like System of Down. I'll yeah. give you that. I'm shitting on this pretty hard, but System of Down are probably the band after Deftones that I think were the most credible in terms yeah. of just being a band because they moved away from this in the next the next couple of records like Hypnotize and Mesmerize they're not new metal records at all they're hard rock records I mean they're even in East and I've, I've honestly lost track of them they played E flat 
like they're playing E flat, they're not even detuned anymore. Do you know what I mean? And and the guitars are super trebly as well, which can be quite great a lot of the time. Um, but I would be able to still be quite heavy despite that. And, and Serge Tankian started doing all the kind of like um, Armenian sort of mm-hmm. Eastern European folk yeah. music, didn't he? I mean, he's doing yeah. uh, there, are, there are elements of that on toxicity. Um, and he apparently in the in linear notes I was reading, like he just was over linear notes, yeah. <laughs> liner notes, <laughs> linear notes, liner notes, same thing. Doesn't matter. Um, <laughs> They're just all very straight. <laughs> yeah, but like he, yeah. he, like he's responsible, or he's been credited as doing all the string arrangements as well, which I think is really interesting. Which he might take forward in his solo career. Like quite it is a very progressive record from that genre. Like I, I think it's untouchable yeah, by those standards. Yeah, 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 and also. It is one of the ones I don't know If you're all fucking Driving to the beach And you put it mm. in, on in the car Every dum, mm. dum, 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 Everybody knows it And then you can pretty much Sing all the way through Skipping a couple of tracks yeah. I mean It is It's like It's a classic New metal record More wood For their fires Loud neighbours Flashlight reveries Caught in the headlights Of a truck I think out of the records we've chosen, out of all the new metal records I think that are out there, this is probably the most accessible one and probably the best written one, I think, songwriting-wise, in te- certainly in terms of popular appeal. Yeah, it's just got it's some filler in it. It's better songs. I mean, you could argue that Limp Bizkit are better writing singles, and definitely they are, um, if you like that kind of music, but these are just more well-crafted bits of music, I think. I mean, it's definitely personally. a better album than either Limp Bizkit album. Any, I say either. Any. Any. Yeah, the but two the singles were always smash hits because they knew how to fucking write a, yeah. a riff and, I have a, to say, and like, a chorus. Like, as, as an umpty, I did listen to $3 Bill Yell quite a bit. It was all right, actually. It's actually Cover a of Faith record, is great. Yeah. Cover um, of Faith is amazing. But it's before I knew what was happening. Counterfeit's <laughs> a cracker of a song still. Yeah, yeah, yeah I like Counterfeit. Really, really well. right. I think Significant Other would be quite an interesting instrumental record if it didn't have <laughs> fucking Fred Durst just being a fucking moron on it. Like, his lyrics are just so ridiculous. Yeah. I don't know, like, there's something really nice and naive about Significant Other. It just sounds like a, like, boys having fun. Dish and it's got, like, weird... Dish bags. Sounds like yeah. a frat party. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. But, like, there's some, like, really cool riffs on that record. Um, and Chocolate Starfish is him trying to be interesting but feeling miserable I just what's yeah. the what's the um, Which Wes, Wes Borland yeah. tried so mm. hard to get taken seriously as a guitarist yeah well. no because he's mean, a all, fucking cracking guitar yeah, player yeah but man. albeit like, all, the, what was that band that he formed after it the dog uh, something I, oh fuck yeah there was a dog one and then he always he always said that he was going to form this death black metal band called Goat something goat horror or something like that there was loads of chat but, as well that he was that guy Buckethead for ages yeah 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 people thought that it was him no but people I mean, got he, kind of carried away with he went, him and he wasn't actually as good as yeah. people thought but, but he's still has great like guitar. 50 albums Buckethead he really wanted insane. to be right. seen as legitimate in the context of knowing that his band were cash cow but mm-hmm. a fucking joke he wore a monkey's face and, <laughs> and yeah, contact yeah, lenses true. and true. body paint it's, it's kind of yeah. weird that we're going to do a new metal thing here and we're not going to have a Limp Bizkit album a Linkin Park, Park album or a Deftones album. That's, yeah. that's pretty crazy. I mean, the Biscuit are like the most throwaway band on earth. They're, they're, like, they know that now. Like, even when they play shows, they're doing it for the party factor. Do you know what I listened to the other night when we were talking about this? Gold Cobra. Oh, the, I it is. That was the last Limp Biscuit album. album. Was it? Mm-hmm. Oh, it was hilarious. Do you know what? I played it and I was like, that's quite a cool guitar riff. Mm-hmm. And then by track three, I was like, oh, I need to turn this off. <laughs> this is, this is, there's only so much of that one. Oh, no, just really bad. Gold, like, a gold, a gold, a gold. <laughs> I, I, I totally, like, I totally acknowledge the iconic status of that System of Down album. It is huge. It sums up a lot. It, it sums up the kind of counterculture thing as well. Um, it did it's actually cool. have some really good mm-hmm. songs in it. Like, they were good songs. Like, there mm-hmm. were good songs in there. I, I just felt that the first album was more interesting and a bit more unexpected. So, do you want to tell us why you think Slipknot, Slipknot is better than Toxicity? Am I going next? <laughs> <laughs> I definitely actually don't think that it's better than that, although I, I, I was quite nostalgic about it. It's a 
killer, man. The first, the first Slipknot album, I had a lot of time for it. It, it was a it was a shot in the arm, and mm-hmm. it was like much darker than the other new metal it's stuff. So I was heavier. Thinking about so, yeah, so much heavier. It had like the the drum and bass breaks and stuff uh, mm-hmm. early on. Is it sick? It starts with the drum and mm-hmm. bass break at the start. Mm-hmm. No, it's eyeless. It like, doesn't even matter. Who mm-hmm. cares? I'm not gonna get it in, am I? <laughs> so um, it had the kind of the kind of creepy vocal sample at the start. Mm-hmm. You know, the, the whole thing I think is shit. Like that, yeah. that thing. Mm-hmm. It had loads of like little kind of spooky, weird things and. Whilst the mask thing was pretty douchebaggy as well, it was like. But fuck, as a fifteen-year-old, it was so exciting. Yeah, man. I wasn't fifteen yeah. though. This is, I, I, didn't was, have like, I was just so excited because I read about them before I heard them. Mm-hmm. I was like, "What the fuck are they this were bad? Man. They smell jars full of dead birds before they go on That's, stage. Yeah, uh, they what do. A oh, fucking bunch like, of idiots, man. No, I was so excited. And then when I bought the record and that, you know, the whole thing that yeah, and it just built in, and it was so, just this yeah, so chaos. They, they, was, to be uh, fair, like the first. Maybe five or six tracks were like pretty strong. His front, his front loaded like fuck that. Yeah, album. It's, it's, like, it's pretty heavy. But, yeah. but but I had selectively omitted so many things from that album that see going back, holy shit, they did not age well. They did not age well. Like, I took the tracks right and I divided them into categories. My categories were good, <laughs> cringeworthy, and shitter. Like, <laughs> fuck's sake. <laughs> so miserable. Like, to be fair, second Eyeless, really good. Surfacing's like, alright. I love Surfacing. Surfacing's good. Yeah, I actually quite like Tattered and Torn. Though it's pretty weird. I yeah. like Tattered and Torn. Aesthetics is pretty good, and that's where they get into their kind of weird, mm. drawn out, creepy stuff. Pure which which they well. don't get. Yeah, you don't, don't listen get... to the version with Purity on it, did you? Uh, no, I didn't listen to the version. Purity's, Purity's a really good song, really good. and it's got like that whip sample yeah. on it, and it's like really good chorus. And also, so. uh, I thought uh, Diluted is alright, and yeah. Scissors is a pretty cool. Oh, track. fuck it, Scissors yeah, has got yeah. that massive riff. Cringe worthy though. Wait and Bleed is pretty fucking cringeworthy now, and Spit It Out is honking. I would say, I would say, uh, that, that uh, is brutal. Spit It Out. Spit It Out is the first track I heard. Yeah. And I was yeah. like, this is amazing. But I, oh, I, yeah, I am now, on man. board with this now. But like, listen to Spit It yeah. Out now is absolutely then, fucking dreadful. The shitter category, Me Inside, is a total donkey of a song. Liberate is a total donkey of a song, and the ab- I was the I, absolute pits is a song called No Life. Oh my god! Yeah. I've been going on about this since so you told me this, man. And if you listen back to it, it doesn't even. I mean. It is Limp Biscuit. It mm. doesn't even sound heavier than Limp Biscuit. It yeah, is, yeah, yeah. It, is it was just a new metal r- song. Because, like, you listen to, I don't know, Surfacing or Sick, and they're metal. They're yeah. f- fucking metal as fuck. And that's what they do well. That's what Slipknot... Yeah, Slipknot absolutely. are really good heavy metal oh, they band. Moved, like, they had the but they were not a good new metal band. They were canny enough which is to ironic. move away from this shit. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. But this... The, and there's a song called Only One as well, which is fucking dreadful as well. Like another super rapped, like, hip hoppy thing. And it really didn't suit the band. It doesn't suit their image. It doesn't suit their talent. It, it just does not suit mm. I th- anything. So basically, this as a new metal record, the worst pit bits about it are when they do new metal, yeah. and the best bits are when they just do metal. Mm-hmm. I think yeah. that's how this album is defined. Yeah. So if you want to choose this as your new metal record, <laughs> that would be but weird. I think, I think but, there's a lot of people when we had that post online were talking about this album as well, and I really do think, like honestly, if you go back and listen to this album now, there's a really great EP. Or, or a much shorter album Yeah there's like yeah. Eight, nine yeah, tracks there's, there's four to six tracks That need to be deleted From, from the annals There's also history. like Bonus tracks that they recorded That are maybe better Or like Eeyore was the uh, The really fucking fast Hardcore Like death metal track mm. Um, that was the secret song at the end. Remember, mm. CDs have yeah. secret tracks. You just don't get that on fucking see, Spotify see what, now. I that won, was a belter. See what I won, Volume Three, by the way. Mm. Yeah, you're right about the secret track, number. but um, see what I won, Volume Three. Did they give up on the rapping by Iowa? Yeah, it was nothing. Uh, well, I don't know. I suppose you could argue that there's um, a few bits. Of the maggots has kind of got a bit of rapping on it. Do you know what? Like Slipknot were one of my favourite bands in that time, but then just by the time Volume Three came out, I gave up. Didn't yeah, give same. a shit. Even though they then had some like decent singles, they had a lot yeah. of like, singles. Duality. Like, this is this is the thing, right? So like that is the elephant in the room there, man. Duality is a brilliant fucking single. Duality is the best single to come out mm. of that era of music. I think it is mm-hmm. fucking tremendous. Yeah. I 
so happy to admit his voice is so different on that record as well yeah it is definitely because uh, he started doing the, the, the was it Stone Sour or something no that doing? he'd always been doing that yeah that was, he but, was in that before so yeah but he was obviously yeah, like, yeah, like playing got allowed to do it. vocal more I yeah. mean and, and one, of, one of the things by the way that I really liked warmed to about Slipknot was in their early interviews they were asked can you cite the albums that made you want to do this and there was the usual Pantera ones but their main album was Bleach by Nirvana, and mm. I was a Nirvana kid. But you can get that because it's got co- that yeah, groove co- on some of their riffs. Yeah. So like Corey Taylor was like, by the time I got in there, he was like, we were all really talking about how much we loved Nirvana, mm. the early Nirvana, the sludgy Melvin's era yeah, Nirvana. Like, there's some riffs on Slipknot that if you take them away from a click track, they're kind of like Floyd the Barber or something like yeah, that. Yeah. Yeah. That part of it did give me a little bit more time for them, and and Duality is a fucking beast. But I do wonder. Duality is so good compared to the stuff that came around it if it was written for them. Like, I, I don't mean entirely for them, but if it was one of those things where it's like, guys, we've got a lot of money sunk into you, you've still got a big fan base, we really need you to have a, a toxicity-type moment. But they had they had My Plague from Iowa on a Resident Evil soundtrack. That was huge. That, which man. is weird. Like, yeah, I'm, but it's no duality, man. No, not, Even no, no. Heretic Anthem as well, it's no duality, man. Iowa, I loved Iowa. <laughs> I remember the day it came out, I was so fucking excited. <laughs> And it's a metal album, but it, again, it's for me, it's when they try to go mainstream that they lose it because mm. they're a good metal band. And My Plague is one of the tracks that I would just delete off that album, yeah. even it's though it's the biggest songs, single. Yeah. Uh, I thought well, Left Behind's all right. It's mm. quite like the guitar riff, but, you know, it's the tracks like Disaster Piece of People Equal Shit. Disaster Pieces. Disaster, so disaster Pieces is a fucking death metal track. Yeah. yeah, so, I mean, I think, like we said, when they got away from the... The mm. rap rock. The tropes of the genre. Yeah, yeah. They got better. Can I just highlight as well one thing that's been really not sitting well with me, right? So <laughs> I, had to, I had to research this, right? So this Slipknot by Slipknot was not Slipknot's first album. Mm-hmm. Slipknot had one, arguably two albums prior to that, mm-hmm. right? But if you go to Wikipedia, it says Slipknot by Slipknot's their debut album. And it's so clearly part of a kind of yeah, but backwards it's, engineering it, by the but, record label. No, but it's like Pantera as well. Like Pantera's debut album is Cowboys from Hell. Yeah. But they were a band. And But it's also that the record label desperately doesn't, it wants to construct the mythology of the band as in they were good, they hit the ground yeah, running. But bands still do that. Like, I'm not going to name who it is, <laughs> but a big Scottish act a couple of years ago got in touch with me through my online blog stuff and like asked if we could remove a video that they'd done because they were going to release a new album uh, or their debut album and the stuff that they'd done before was so different and they didn't want it associated it so they were like cleansing the pool before they then became this new cool act yeah that, that's the thing though that's so that, like uh, it's that's, done that's when you start to see though that they've been so heavily image managed and that's why i'm suspicious about where duality came from in the context of that band because if their label is trying to rewrite history so the yeah. album was mid fake at mid Mate, <laughs> mate, oh my mate God. feed, kill, repeat. Mate, feed, kill, repeat, or MFK, our motherfucker. Like, and that came out in '96, and it's fucking dog shit. And mm-hmm. you can, you can listen. To <laughs> so, the, there's some weird like oh. jazz <laughs> interludes, and it's all oh. it's, God, it's absolutely bogging. And it's you can you can hear the whole thing on YouTube. I encourage you to go and listen to it. <laughs> um, I had it on MP3 on I, my Rio as a uh, 32 megabyte MP3 player, and also. A year the old album on <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I had to change it every time. Yeah, so. so they will not want us telling you to go and listen to this, but please go and listen to it. So um, after that as well came um, an album called Crows. C-R-O-W-Z, um, as is the want of new metal bands. Um, but Crows never actually got released, and it kicks about in bootlegs for like super fans. And there's a yeah. bunch of tracks like Wait and Bleed and the Prosthetics were on that that got re-recorded. Yeah, yeah and... Oh, um, fuck. Uh, but basically... There's one... There's one track on that ah oh, fuck I can't remember but it's like got a sample I just remember I had it on my mp3 player as well and it goes the riff and then it's a sample from a movie and it's like I think that guy's gonna fuck that little dog <laughs> <laughs> and then it cuts into the riff again and I was like this is a terrible song but I like that sample they were like what does this track need or do you think they wrote the track around the sample or do you think they had the song I mean who knows they were like guys yeah. we need something for this gap either way um, they nailed that gap Gordon Ramsay <laughs> <laughs> it's raw it's fucking raw <laughs> anyway Crows got them attention from major labels yeah well they shop. they ended up rather than releasing it shopping it about as a like a, a full length yeah demo. give us money and, and then, then Corey Taylor was in and then they point, managed to get Ross Robinson to come and produce it we haven't mentioned Ross Robinson which we is weird any producers he yet, was a kingmaker like, of new metal yeah yeah because yeah, yeah. he produced Korn and then he went on and he you know he did so much at stuff at the driving at the driving yeah. I know yeah relationship of command mm-hmm. it's like it's easy to forget how engineered that was because that was Glass them Joe. applying the, yeah they, Glasgow and at the drive-in were put through the same machine 
the same hit machine that some of the new metal bands before them just, had been put through. But he like what he managed to do with Glassjaw and at the driving and Slipknot was capture that live madness and yeah, like but, but was, like really put a shine to it, but it also had an energy to it. Yeah, I mean he an excellent producer, obviously, yeah. but also very much somebody that was able to execute what the record labels wanted to happen with this record in order as they saw it for it to succeed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he seemed pretty good at his job. But anyway, he was such yeah. a man of his so time. I just want like, to fucking nail my colours to the mast here. That no, Slipknot by Slipknot is not their debut <laughs> album. And at the very least, you should acquaint yourself with how fucking bad their debut album is <laughs> just to fucking give two fingers up to the record label that thought they could rewrite history by omitting it. Can I just say that I think that Slipknot not have have a really great greatest hits collection. Oh, I I <laughs> agree. Like pretty much untouchable. Like, their best like eighteen songs yeah. is better than a lot of bands' best eighteen songs. Psychosocial as well is like a, from yeah, uh, all, that's a banger. From, uh, all hope is gone. That's a, that's very similar to duality. Yeah, and the, and its construction as well. I was kind of wondering about this, right? So new metal, uh, sorry, not because Slipknot's kind of hokey sort of like costume thing. And by the way, they were really, really fucking good live. I saw uh, Slipknot at the Barras mm-hmm. and two of them set each other on fire <laughs> and the DJ did the front flip off the PA, knocked a girl out with his foot and then the crowd attacked them. And I was like, ah, to be fair, I'm getting my money's worth. <laughs> <laughs> it was, that was pretty good. Uh, so pretty much the songs I wait to see. But see, see in amongst all that kind of hokey imagery that they did with, it, with, it, with their masks and stuff, do you think they were just like a modern version of the Misfits, or do you think there was something another level of false about them? See, I never really got the sense. Maybe I was just maybe I was sucked down by the marketing, but I never really got the sense they were all that false. Like I, I think they'd, I think what had happened is they'd engineered a lot of the stuff they wanted to do before label came calling. Because there's, there's a, I think that's naive, man. There's a huge, there's still yeah. a huge thing about how Mushroomhead are raging about the fact that that like, Slipknot basically stole their idea. Like, <laughs> did, fuck, I wonder if that's just a bluff. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean the hilarious thing is Mushroom Head were awful yeah really <laughs> so bad, bad. Band. Yeah. what about fucking Mudvayne man Mudvayne fucking went oh that's did... another album by the way LD50, yeah, LD50 is a got... fucking great a album a lot of people give that a shout yeah. Yeah. Um, Digs a pretty cool track Digs great <laughs> Uh, nothing again like spell like Ed Gain Ed Gain oh clever uh, Death Blooms it's, it was a patchy album but some really great tracks that were way more progressive than a lot of new metal actually we did say as well we were going to touch on this but it was interesting about new metal how such was its gravity and the sheer amount of money orbiting around it at the time that it, it, it drew in otherwise large celestial bodies to its genre. <laughs> yeah. So you had like bands like Machine Head who went in and did yeah. the Burning yeah. Red and stuff. Yeah, Slayer. yeah. Diabolus and Musica definitely had some new metal and it was awful. But like, that's their worst record, yeah. definitely. Like that, is bringing, um, that is bringing the mountain to Mahana. But like there, that yeah. is, and Fear Factory, Digimortal as well. <laughs> St. Anger. I suppose to some extent, yeah. St. Anger. <laughs> Metallica's best record. Yep. We'll get to that. <laughs> that no, that's, a, that's a fucking... I never, like... That's a special that I never uh, I mean, it totally is. But, um, yeah, yeah. It, but what's funny is, like, uh, the Burning Red and Digimortal and Diabolus and Musica. Well. Like oh yeah, Supercharger as well. Metal, but these are all these bands' worst albums. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, like, <laughs> like they tried new metal and it yeah. just browned the water. Just, like the way that like Cavalera, for example, left Sepultura and then Soulfly was like new metal effectively, mm-hmm. like a kind of new metal version well, of Sepultura. But Roots is probably a new, metal, a new metal record. Album, I'd say, they yeah. just, they, yeah. Mm-hmm. That, well, that's one that I think probably would have deserved a shout. Yeah. And isn't as entirely awful as some of the others, but it's yeah. not as good as Zen and Sepultura did before it. No. Yeah. And and then, that, the reason we couldn't pick it is because we all pick a Sepultura album, which is it's superior. From their, yeah, from yeah, their I think they, proper I think era. Proper mention, yeah. So, Dave, let's stop fucking about here and talk about Corn here. All right, so Corn are the defining the new metal band. New metal this is because, why I'm here. Because they, they made that brown sludgy noise their own. What the fuck, 
Um, but you know, fucking hell, when Korn's first record came out, people were really fucking excited by them because it didn't yeah, sound like anything. Mm. And, and they didn't look like anything and they didn't yeah. talk like... At the like time, th- I, can, I, can, I can tell you firsthand that my school was saturated with fans of Stone Fucking Roses. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It was just all baggy, Mancunian shit everywhere and it was fucking nightmarish. And so they were part of a movement that was a welcome breath of fresh air, even yeah. if it just was just to be like, yes, I know Kurt Cobain killed himself. No, that doesn't mean it's okay to listen to Charlatans. Yeah. Uh, now we've got <laughs> something fucking else. Albeit it was a bit of a false dawn. Yeah. Yeah. And Korn, the album, Korn, I mean, it very much defined a sound that all these bands then took from uh, that sort of down tuned stuff. And like Korn as a record is patchy, but it's really interesting. And like, I can imagine how fucking exciting it was to hear it. You know, like Blind is still a fucking banger of a track. Just that riff, mm-hmm. an amazing riff. The opening to it is cool. Like, see, it's like a very iconic opening. You yeah. Know. Like it's the opening the, of that genre. It's the opening of genre. Yeah, you're right. Actually, it's, uh, just like, it's literally like here's a new thing. This is going to be with us for ten fucking yeah, years. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then life is peachy. Didn't I, get the critical acclaim. I think it's actually like I have to admit, life is peachy. I really enjoyed at the time. I've not gone back. I can't bring myself to go back. I'm pretty sure no. Adidas is fucking humming and yeah, they're there's just, some like, bad tracks on it. I dream about and, sex. Um, fucking and any band that's sponsored. By competing tracksuit <laughs> companies who switched from Adidas to, to Puma. Puma. I know. For fuck's sake. It's not like they're athletes, they're fat bastards. <laughs> it's fucking I mean, it is so absurd. I don't know your fucking name, so what? Let's fuck. But of course he was also He had his bagpipes yeah, On his belt as well You know oh, it's I, He's like, a Scottish guy I fucking you know, so. hate bagpipes So <laughs> much man. I saw that so uh, There was a video That went viral From the Lad Bible today Which was a guy Bungee jumping While he was playing the bagpipes And it sounds exactly Like the opening <laughs> track From Issues <laughs> <laughs> I just thought you were going to say it sounds exactly like bagpipes played normally. <laughs> Jesus. Um, and then Follow the Leader was the big commercial album that yeah, then took them the, to the mainstream. And the yeah. videos, you could see it just in the in the money that was spent on them in the videos yeah. for Follow the Leader. And, and stuff it's the one... The marketing. It's the one with the, you know, the singles that people go back to. Freak and Unleash. Freak and Unleash and Got the Life. Mm-hmm. Um, and it it's was the first... It's got fucking Farside, it's got Farside on it, it's got Fred Dust on it, it's got yeah. fucking... It's got a couple of really big rappers on it. There's yeah, Method Man, Method Method Man's, Man's on, on it. it. Yeah. There's like, I know, are some like... Who, who was it that had the guy from Orgy on their album as well? I'm pretty sure that, I'm pretty sure he's on the record too. Yeah, because I thought he was really yeah, they all did bits. They all yeah. like mm-hmm. went in and out of each other's albums. Yeah. There were so many Orgy, guest spots yeah. all the time. I have, and then, I have the two or I have the first two Orgy albums. There were two albums? Jesus Christ. There was, was just a, been for a, bit, a bit four, but I... But it was just the one that had Blue Monday on it. It was Candy Ass and then the one afterwards, which was... Oh, that was it, Candy Ass. And they all wore like white leather suits and like blue hair and they are awful. Um, uh, still orgy. Probably hanging still, yeah, out with that guy. Food, Dave school. <laughs> and from any folk follow the leaders, like maybe the defining corn record because it was the biggest. Uh, I remember it had the first twelve tracks were all four seconds long yep. silence, so it started on track thirteen. That's pretty cool, isn't it, guys? That's pretty cool. Yeah. That's, that's um, forward thinking. Unlucky for some, <laughs> as in the entire world. Yeah. It's far too long, that record. It's, it's so, so long. I know, it is really long. Like, there's some decent tracks on it, album tracks, like Seed is actually quite good, but then there's some shite as well, fucking Camel Tosis. Children of the Corn. Oh, really? Children, that's a track. Children of the Corn has fucking Ice Cube on it. That's yeah, that's right. It's Children fucking of the Corn. Ice Cube oh, fucking joking, there's a song called Camel Tosis. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is fucking, uh, that is new metal right then there. That is new metal. Dead Bodies Everywhere. Which is actually pretty, that was, actually pretty that's good. That's actually pretty good. That had some good yeah. riff. And then, Oh, Dead Fred bodies Durst. everywhere Fred, The problem is Fred Durst ruined that fucking album Because oh, it had really? that Absolute abortion of a song uh, I, I don't All know the in the family Who the fuck you think you're talking to I'm known for eating little whiny chumps like you Whatever All up in my face with that Are you ready? 
And it's Fred Durst and Jonathan Davis like rapping verse yeah. about and they're just slagging each other off. All in the family. And I, I really liked that track when I heard it because so I was a small child that thought the word dick was funny. But fucking hell, it's awful. That is a bad track. I don't think track. that album needed Fred Durst to ruin it. But you're right, that no, didn't, it's that didn't a, make it's it better. A, it's not a bad album and it's got some great tracks on it. But like, So let's talk about artwork and then your album as well. Todd McFarlane, the guy who created Spawn, he did the artwork for that record. That for, was the animation as well, wasn't it? And the it? animation. Yeah, 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 yeah. the animation. Yeah, that's right. Um, so that was bad, but nowhere near as bad. Before you even listen to a tune in issues, nowhere near as bad as the cover. Hey, I was a competition winner. Yeah, <laughs> I, was a, I, was, I was a fan. That was fan service. There that, is, that, there's a lot of fan service around, around issues. Yeah. Mm. I remember when that the call for that competition went out. Yeah, they got what fucking thousands of entries. I just sent a wee photo of my bum. <laughs> <laughs> would have been better. <laughs> um, but man, for me, Issues is like their most tall record. And it's, I don't know if it's a good album. No, but it's not. <laughs> no, like, I, I, I can also say sorry, it's I'm I got it. <laughs> Look, I, my parents got it for my Christmas along with two other CDs, U2, The Best of 1980, 1990, and Cars, Talk on Corners. So that was the three that I was faced with that Christmas. <laughs> and we decided to start a music podcast. <laughs> <laughs> no, so that meant I listened to fucking Corn Issues for two years non-stop. I remember, I remember, oh, what was I playing? I also got a game for Christmas. I got Wo- World of Warcraft. No, no, it would have been Warcraft 2 or something. It was way before it was online. Yeah. So I remember clicking the orcs while listening to Corn Issues. Those were the it days. I mean, um, it's it's a fucking midden of an album. It's so <laughs> it dull. Is like it's it is a so dirt. It is just fucking st- sticky and dark no, and dank. falling away from me. Great track. Yeah. I, st- I, I still get that stuck in my head regularly I've not heard that in about 10 years um, before this podcast like Trash is a really good song yeah Uh, somebody somewhere is pretty decent. Somebody somewhere, uh, beg for me is actually pretty cool. Wake up's a fucking belter of a track. That was the first song on that first Kerrang CD that I ever had, and it was the CD that was in my CD player that I used as my alarm for about two years. So I got woken up by Corn mm-hmm. saying, "Wake up." Wake Up's about the band, isn't uh, it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. He so was been just band, like, yeah. come on, guys, we're, we're losing this. Mm-hmm. Wake up. So subtle. Yeah. And uh, then he didn't listen. <laughs> and then, hey, Dad. Oh, oh, no, yeah, I don't, I don't know. No. Somebody, someone is like a good track. I don't know. I just listened to this album nonstop and I know it inside out. And to me, I, I, I know it's kind of brown and dirty and the production's kind of fatty. But for me, it's just like going back and like lying in a big, overly washed brown duvet that's still upstairs, and it's really comfy. And like I could, I I could listen to this album straight through walking home tonight, and I would just enjoy it. And I I don't know why. And I think a lot of people will have that if this was their album. You can't really be objective about it because it was the album that you just can listen to a lot. It sounds like a Brendan O'Brien record. Does that make sense to you? A what, sorry? A Brendan O'Brien record. It sounds like one of his records. The guitars are all kind of, they're heavy, but it's still kind of neutered sounding, like there's no real bite to them. <sighs> yeah, it is quite sludgy. And like, he, he did that Metallica a, record as well. Yeah. He's worked on. For many people, it's very samey, but for me, it actually works really well because it's all self-contained mm. and it flows very well. In the interest of consistency, though, I think there's a thing about Korn, which, you know, we were pretty hard in the, on Descendants, for being Purell grown men mm-hmm. I think it is perpetually off-putting about Corn. I mean even even going all the way back to the song Faggot on the first Corn album mm-hmm. and you're like I mean Jonathan Davis was notoriously a bully when he was a kid so like, it's more likely he was the one shouting faggot than yeah. anyone else but I think the fact that these were like fully I mean this is probably true of new metal in general especially Papa Roach bands like that 
just the fucking level of sheer self-indulgent, self-pitying, whining, fucking family issue pish that, that, that they made a buck off. Like, the fact that they were obviously targeting angsty early teenagers and preteens. I mean, it's just, like, shameless fucking milking, like, candy from a baby. Like, let's write another album. I mean, no, I mean, to be fair, I think... Check, check I think Jonathan Davis was sexually abused as a child. As on that song, Daddy, on... He actually breaks down in the middle of the song on the first column record. Well, yeah. He had real <laughs> issues, Chris. <laughs> and that's what this album is about. It's him coming to terms with his issues and the band's issues. And it's just, it just sums it up. The worst Chris. offender is disturbed by a good long way. I hate I that hate, band so much. I really hate that band. Like, Voices is a track. And then, what's the famous one as well? Down with the Sickness. Down with which the Sickness. Actually has, has all, no, mommy, don't hate me, mommy. But in it, but he's, oh, oh, that that Jesus. Actually, that's actually in the song. Oh, fucking hell. Disturbed, their first album had some interesting riffs on it and stuff, and then they just became bloated and awful. For that. But he, so I always hated him. him. He's a fucking prick. David Drayman. David mm. Drainman. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well. With his big spikes coming out his chin. I'm a label. Fucking tool. I'm, I'm going to put this out there. I think results of this notwithstanding, for the sheer wealth of material and interest and cultural insight, we will probably come back to new metal. Maybe in a slightly more nuanced way. It might be more interesting to deliberately pick something that's not one of the big hitters next time and pick something that kind of was like lower down, even if it's dog shit, just to see what it says about the genre. Because there yeah. was some really interesting, odd, some weird stuff. Like we spoke about the band Kitty. They were an interesting mm-hmm. phenomenon. There'll just be some. Uh, I think there's more meat in the bone. Sugar coma. Um, yeah, I remember them. I do shit, remember yeah, them. Yeah. Absolutely. Cold. Remember cold. cold I remember yeah. cold. The one that you just told me I couldn't do. Yeah. Cold by cold. Yeah. Not I, I just don't. Think I, 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 don't I didn't say anything. I about just don't that. think it's new metal. I think. Yeah. I mean, I think there are subsequent albums when you metal. Then they had an Snot. album called. Remember Snot? Snot. Snot yeah. Uh, Lynch, dope. Lynch Street. Yeah. Died. Dope. Yeah. I. Yeah. Static X, of course. Static. Right, yep. Yeah. Big Wayne. Uh, big <laughs> <boy>. <laughs> Women in the wings. <laughs> um, but I, uh, I think, I think, I think there's quite a lot of interesting things to be said about it as a subculture and a big subculture at that. Especially as it kind of progressed and there was like stuff drifting about underneath the surface, it was slightly more obscure. Out of these three, it was slim fucking pickings. With Deftones yeah. out the picture and with you having picked Toxicity, and I think really the first SOAD album is the only other one that really jumps out at me. I found it really difficult. People might pick Slipknot. It's not going to be on the basis of my fucking enthusiastic defence of their case. Maybe we should have... Maybe I should... Oh, no. I should have chosen fucking Hybrid Theory, but... Maybe, I, maybe I'm like, okay. Hybrid Theory would have cruised this. Yeah. I maybe think this doesn't... Maybe it's not a vote then. Do you know what I mean? Maybe this is just not a vote. Maybe no, just, fuck it. We're no, voting. We're fucking goalposts. Don't <laughs> change. Just because... They're voting on these three I just don't want to win. records. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one we don't want to win. <laughs> Uh, no, it's fine. Stand by my choice. Wait, I so to, I everybody, to... go to unsungpod dot com <laughs> and don't vote on a vote that's not there. So none of these. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I mean, nah, no. I mean, go and do it. And but we yourself. enjoy your feedback as well. Like the Facebook part has been great. Yeah, yeah, it's it has been really interesting. Yeah. And all the names that come out of like left field, like that suddenly you're fucking like rolling your eyes like because somebody's told you about Power Man 5000 <sighs> or uh, American Head Charge Stab him <laughs> Linear 77 Linear 77 that was a super obscure yeah, one El Nino oh. yeah. El Nino yeah. some of the later period ones yeah, yeah some really odd did you say American Head Charge? I said that yeah just rattling Drown around and your pool. brain Drown and Pool Drown and Pool was that's like I mean so many of these bands were used to torture people in Guantanamo yeah. as well. let's not forget that but yeah okay well, I'm going to walk home and listen to Issues because it's the album that I'll go back to personally, so fuck it, that's the one I went for. <laughs> uh, Slipknot, yep, great. Toxicity, that's the one I'll probably put on at a party with all my, six, my pals. Oh, your 16-year-old pals. With all my 16-year-old pals. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, my pals that have been not, friends that's since I was 16. Is that supposed to be like Fixture the Progress? Uh, we didn't talk go, about Lost Profits, which I think... First record was definitely new metal, I think. <laughs> yeah. and Like Shinobi the, versus Dragon Ninja yeah. is... That's a really good new metal, new metal song. Yeah, then they became not a new metal band on the second record and so on. But yeah. I mean, it's, there's a couple. Of, I, I fucking loved that band when the first record came out. 
Yep. But, but you can't then, listen to them now. No, it's impossible. Much like they Gary Clutter had some great glam record songs, but we can't listen to Gary Clutter, so... It's like in Black... It's just an episode of Black Mirror where, like, you can block people. That's what happens. Fuck that, you've got Burzum now. socks. I don't have Burzum <laughs> socks. I fucking don't listen to Burzum. I hate Burzum. I'm a man of honour. You've just lost us so many of our alt-rate listeners. Yeah, uh, so many. And he says with an Emperor t-shirt, <laughs> I, Emperor Hooding, I'm pretty sure one of these men murdered somebody, but that's fine. So, yeah, go and vote, I guess. I mean, how's this going to work? If it's a bonus episode, people can't vote if it's just for subscribers. It's going to go up legit eventually anyway. Okay, so subscribers, yeah. enjoy the banner while it lasts, and then you can edit that bit out for the second coming around. Yeah. And go and vote on the Facebook page and let us know which of these three records deserve to go on the discography. <laughs> <laughs> Should we have a fourth category that's like none of the above? Or yes, it will definitely be a none of the are above. You f- are you fucking serious? Yeah. Are you for real? <laughs> um, the last thing I was going to say, um, how, how did this generation of men, be- men boys, men babies, how are they going, how are they getting away? How are they going to get away? How are they going to keep getting away with the whole Me Too thing? Because that's fucking, that there's going to be a litany of bullshit oh, that's, that's I, went on there. Do you mean like, like, how have no new metal yeah, how artists is, have come out how getting that fingered? that not happened yet? Yeah, that's true. There, that will just happen. I, I'll be honest, I don't necessarily think that the, it's any more prevalent in new metal than it is in like pop music. Yeah, but why? Like, it, I mean, it's going Maybe to, they were just more overt about it. Like, I fucking, I watched uh, Limp Biscuit at Woodstock 99 video. Fuck that show, by the way. We should have spoken about that. Yeah, and Sorry, that the was one the one where, like, girls are raped, raped in the crowd. Yeah, and yeah. there was an actual riot, yeah. Yeah, but, like, there's the video of it on YouTube, and, like, there's a guy surf crowd surfing on, like, a bit of wood that they've ripped down. And then there's a girl like, on shoulders, and she's, like, just got her tits out, and then a guy just, like, grabs a tit. And then she just like puts it away. And you're like, oh yeah, just wit- witnessed the sexual assault there, but everybody's <laughs> laughing about it because it's 1999 and nobody cares. Yeah, it's, it's a really interesting culture that, that was around that. And I think it kind of, yeah, it does feed into that jock grow totally, yeah. culture mm-hmm. that brought out so many of the kind of worst instincts of people. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it's probably true. I think actually new metal behind the scenes, I'd, I, I'd be skeptical if it was any worse, like I said, than pop music. I think if you start going through some of the boy bands that were successful, they've probably done some horrible fucking shit and they've just got really good Do you know what? I I mean, there have been people, you know, even before this, you know, so there's like the guitarist from Static X and Mm. stuff like that. And I suppose that wasn't as big a news because you just kind of expected it. Like some of these guys were probably creepy and it's not, it's not been part of the, oh, holy fuck, fuck, it's come from this like legitimate world and like everybody's bad. It's like, oh yeah, the same percentage were dodgy in this, but it was kind of expected because they were outwardly dodgy as well. Yeah, that's that's the thing. I think possibly what the, <coughs> the differential is that the crowd in New Metal, the culture around New Metal was more overtly sexist and misogynistic and encouraged to be so. And I, I think like, you know, I think that's possibly part of its marketing and part of its appeal was that it gave license to, to just jock mm-hmm. frat boy behaviour like it's frat metal yeah, like totally. frat metal would probably have been a better fucking name for it and and I think the, the audience is probably a bigger signifier of the attitudes around it than the artists themselves I'm, I, I'm sure that a huge number of them got up to all kinds of awful shit but I'm sure I know that a huge number of pop acts and indie acts have got up to an awful lot of shit I just think the the messages that were going out to their audiences weren't quite the same. And the frat, the frat thing. Oh, at really least they weren't hypocrites, eh? Yeah. <laughs> the frat thing was really interesting because I don't think I can only speak for myself here, but like myself and the people that I knew at the time, we didn't think of it in that way when we were listening to it. Do you know what I mean? It was all about the angst. Yeah, I know. It was, for teenagers, it was very innocent, mm-hmm. and it was like, oh, they're speaking to you know, Papa Roach are speaking to me because they're talking about you know, self harm or whatever, and or you know, broken hearts or difficult family lives because like when you're a teenager you think all this shit is bad like and happening to you but um you viewed it with this sort of innocence and you didn't think you were getting like sold to or anything you thought it was legit and it's only with this sort of <sighs> cynical eye like christopher look is cashing, <laughs> casting back you've got two cynical eyes i have got two i've got three <laughs> cynical eyes <laughs> <laughs> But yeah, it, it was fun when it was there. It was fun while it lasted. Mm-hmm. Is, I can't agree with that. Uh, you, you weren't there, you're too old. Fucking murder while it lasted. <laughs> it's like, get the, is this snow over here looking out the window? It's like that fucking snowstorm last week. It's, oh, it's fucking snowing again. Like, oh my God, they're bringing another album. But yeah. All right, so that was a lot of fun. That was the first mixtape episode. Yep. 
We're going to do one in future. Either we'll come up with what we think is an interesting subject or maybe we can open it to the floor and see what the, the audience... I think pop punk should come next. Oh, fuck off, man, no. <laughs> I can't do two such horrendous genres back to back. I really can't. <laughs> Please, let's pick something with something to get Black to. Black metal. Bands uh, with bold frontmen. Uh, well, thank you very much for listening. Please go and vote on our Facebook page. We'd really appreciate that. And as ever, if you've got a second, give us a rating and review on iTunes. Gentlemen, thank that you. Was, that was... That was long. That yeah. was and that was a wonderful. I enjoyed yeah, it. That was, that was hard, wasn't it? No more short straws, please. No more short straws. Okay. <laughs> oh, I'm going to go... Get some baggy jeans on. Gentlemen, thank you very much. Thank you.